Bible prophecy reveals that a great prophetic event will soon burst upon the world scene. The prophetic day of the Lord will affect all nations and all peoples on earth, and it will affect you and your family. Just what is the day of the Lord? What significance will it have in the flow of Bible prophecy? And how will it affect your life in these end times? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World presents Roderick C. Meredith, Richard Ames, John O'Gwen, bringing you the good news of your future in Tomorrow's World. This week, Richard Ames asks, what is the day of the Lord? And now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. There's a major prophetic event that looms on the horizon. It's called the Day of the Lord. The great prophets of the Bible, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, wrote about it. The so-called minor prophets, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, and Malachi. They also emphasize this event. Even the apostles, Peter, John, and Paul, wrote about it. Just what is the day of the Lord, and how does it fit into the framework of Bible prophecy? Over 30 prophecies in your Bible refer to the day of the Lord. On today's program, we'll answer the question, just what is the day of the Lord? And we'll be offering you a free audio tape on the subject that will help you in your study of Bible prophecy. Be sure to write down the phone number and address to order your free copy. You can also order this free audio tape on our website, at tomorrowsworld.org. This free one-hour audio tape, The Day of the Lord, covers much more information than we have time for in this program. If you have your Bible, turn to the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, chapter 1. The Apostle John writes in Revelation, the first chapter, verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. John is not speaking of a day of the week, as some commentators believe, John is speaking of the major prophetic period of time described in the rest of the book as the prophetic day of the Lord. John is not referring to Sunday as the Lord's day. If John were doing that, he would have referred to Sunday as the first day of the week, as he did in the Gospel of John. Jesus himself said he was Lord of the Sabbath, and he wasn't speaking of Sunday. The expression Lord's day here in Revelation is plainly referring to the theme of the whole book, the prophetic day of the Lord, culminating in the return of Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In chapter 5, we read about a scroll sealed with seven seals. Jesus, the revelator, opens the seals to the book. We read the description of those seals in Revelation, the sixth chapter. The first four seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The first horse, the white horse and its rider, represent false religions, false Christs. Jesus himself points out the sequence of these end-time events, the Olivet Prophecy in Matthew 24. The second seal reveals a horseman riding a red horse with the power to take peace from the earth. The third seal represents a rider on a black horse, representing the scarcity of food and resulting famine. The fourth seal shows a rider on a pale horse with the power over one-fourth of the earth to kill major populations. Jesus also spoke of the pestilence that normally follows on the heels of famine. Critics say that there have always been war, famine, and pestilence. But you and I will see the four horsemen of the apocalypse intensify their ride with increasing global impact as time goes on. These four horsemen are revealed in Revelation chapter 6 as Christ opens the first four seals. Now, what happens when the fifth seal is opened? Turn to Revelation 6 and verse 9. Christ opens the fifth seal in Revelation 6, verse 9. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Here is described the martyrdom of the saints, true Christians. In the first century, the emperor Nero violently persecuted Christians and put them to death. This fifth seal also predicts 
a major end-time persecution of saints. Then Jesus opens the sixth seal, revealing the heavenly signs that will shock people all over the earth. Revelation 6, verse 12. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Not only will asteroids and meteorites frighten people, but massive earthquakes will also shake the earth. As the Apostle John saw in vision, every mountain and island was moved out of its place. If you've ever experienced a strong earthquake, as many of us have in California, you know how frightening earthquakes can be. Almighty God will get the attention of rebellious humans through these earthquakes and heavenly signs. The Creator God tells us in Hebrews 12 and verse 26, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Obviously, it would be better for all of us to repent and humble ourselves before God now, rather than having to be shaken later. Yes, the great men of the earth will flee in terror. They say in Revelation 6, verse 16, to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who is able to stand? Major portions of the earth will be shaken with earthquakes. God will, to use the vernacular, get our attention. The heavenly signs will terrify people. The great leaders of the earth, including arrogant dictators, will be frightened. The heavenly signs introduce the day of the Lord, the time of God's wrath and judgment on an unthankful, rebellious world. Jesus Christ, the Lamb, will be wrathful. He'll execute God's righteous judgments. The day of the Lord, here in Revelation 6, verse 17, is called the great day of His wrath. Just what is the day of the Lord? It's the time of God's judgments on the nations. Yes, all nations on earth will come to judgment. This shouldn't be a surprise to the nations. Several of God's prophets announced this time of judgment and their warnings have long been recorded in the Bible for all to read. The Bible reveals what will happen during the day of the Lord. Again, if you have your Bible, turn to the book of Joel. Joel is near the end of the Old Testament. It's the second of the so-called minor prophets. Turn to Joel, the second chapter. Here's a prophecy for our generation. Joel 2 and verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come, great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. The trumpet is used to sound an alarm, to help people prepare for major battles or as described here, an invading army. The prophet Joel warns of a unique time in all history. Again, Joel 2 and verse 2. A people come, great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successor generations. The following verses describe terrible destruction, a scorched earth policy. Everything is left desolate. Joel 2 and verse 3. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing will escape them. Humanity will also see incredible disruption of the heavens, as well as the total destruction on the land. Joel 2 and verse 10. The earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble, the sun and moon grow dark and the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before His army, for His camp is very great, for strong is the one who executes His word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? God calls this His army. Almighty God will intervene in human affairs in a dramatic way. 
There will be major wars during the time God executes judgment on the nations. Simply stated, the day of the Lord is the time of God's intervention in world affairs. Now, just how long will the day of the Lord last? Just a day of 24 hours or longer? And how does the day of the Lord fit into the framework of Bible prophecy? We'll answer those questions in the next part of the program. But first, I'd like to offer you our free one-hour audio tape titled, The Day of the Lord. More than 30 prophecies in the Bible reveal future events in the prophetic time period called the Day of the Lord. The book of Revelation, or the Apocalypse, particularly gives details of this dramatic and prophetic time. Many of you will be alive during the soon coming Day of the Lord. You need to know the future and what impact the Day of the Lord will have on your life. Just what is the Day of the Lord? Our free audio tape will give you the answers from your Bible, and it will help you in your study of Bible prophecy in your own time and at your own convenience. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free one-hour audio tape titled, The Day of the Lord. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the first part of our program, we saw that the day of the Lord is the time of Almighty God's powerful intervention in world affairs. God will judge rebellious nations. And as we'll see, He will even let the nations actively attempt to destroy one another in world conflict. Not only will there be destruction for military weapons, there will also be incredible ecological devastation. Imagine massive locust invasions. Turn to Joel, the first chapter. Joel 1 and verse 4. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. Even today, locust infestations are not unheard of. In March 2004, Reuters News Service reported from Kunambo, Australia, the following. Quote, Australia is winning the battle against billions of marauding locusts. But the insects are laying eggs in preparation to attack winter crops in six months' time, officials said on Friday. I think we're getting on top of it, said Laurie McCulloch, director of the Australian Plague Locust Commission, APLC, end of quote. Reuters continues with this background, quote, In the year 2000, up to 100 billion locusts traversed the outback in a long band running across three states from western Queensland to New South Wales, NSW and into South Australia. In the afternoon, the sky was just a silver haze, Narramine farmer and livestock agent Jason Harton told the land. When the sun is over them, you'd swear you were looking at a shower of silver bullets, end of quote. In the future, the insect plagues that some nations experience today will seem minor by comparison. When God brings punishments upon rebellious nations in the future day of the Lord, He'll call upon the nations to humble themselves and repent. Of course, we don't need to wait until then. As conditions worsen on the world scene, we all need to pray and cry out to God and make sure we're on God's side. Now, where does the day of the Lord fit in the scheme of end-time prophecy? Let's notice the biblical framework and the prophetic sequence of events. There are three major periods of time or events we need to look at. They are referred to as... Great Tribulation, Heavenly Signs, and the Day of the Lord. It's important to understand the correct order. Jesus spoke of the climax of the age in Matthew 24, verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. 
Christ will come back to this earth to prevent total cosmicide. But this unique time in all history, the Great Tribulation, is also the time of Jacob's trouble, as pointed out in Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. It will be the time of God's punishment on the United States, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the British descended peoples. These are the descendants of Jacob. We've covered those prophecies in other programs. Be sure to tune in next week for more information on the subject. Notice the sequence of events as Jesus stated them in verse 29 of Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The first major event is tribulation, followed by heavenly signs. The day of the Lord, the third event, leads to the second coming of Christ. The second chapter of Joel confirms that the day of the Lord follows after the heavenly signs. Joel 2 and verse 30. Joel 2 and verse 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So we see the sequence of events. Number one is great tribulation. Number two is heavenly signs, or the sixth seal of Revelation. And number three is the day of the Lord, or the seventh seal of Revelation. Just how long is this day of the Lamb's wrath, the day of the Lord? As many students of Bible prophecy know, there is the year-for-a-day principle in prophecy. Remember when the twelve spies of ancient Israel, under the leadership of Joshua, searched out the promised land? The spies came back after 40 days to report on the resources of the land. Ten of the twelve spies gave an evil report and refused to trust God to give them the victory over the giants and the inhabitants of the land. As a result of their unbelief, God condemned them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, a year for each of the 40 days they searched the land. Turn to Numbers 14 and verse 34. According to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. This principle of a day for a year is also used by God in Ezekiel 4 and verse 6. How long, then, is the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord, in one sense, is the year preceding the return of Christ. It's a significant part of God's plan, something all Christians should know. Notice also in Isaiah 34 and verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. Here again, God's punishment, the day of the Lord's vengeance, is equated to one year. Let's briefly summarize. The environmental and political problems symbolized by the four horsemen of the apocalypse will continue to intensify. There will be wholesale religious persecution as revealed through the fifth seal of Revelation. The sixth seal. The heavenly signs will awaken the world to the beginning of the day of the Lord, the seventh seal. Let's understand. The seven seals reveal end-time trends and events. The seventh seal represents the year-long day of the Lord. And the seventh seal consists of seven trumpet judgments during the year-long day of the Lord. As we'll see later, the seventh trumpet itself consists of the seven last plagues mentioned in Revelation 15, verse 1. The seventh seal lasts approximately one year, and it consists of seven trumpet plagues. These trumpet plagues are described in the eighth and ninth chapters of Revelation. Turn in your Bible to Revelation 8 and verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. The trumpets give us warning. They announce seven plagues or judgments. As you read through chapter 8, you'll notice that as the four angels sound their trumpets, there is great ecological devastation all over the earth. There are earthquakes. Vast areas of vegetation are burned up. A third of all sea life dies. Water sources are poisoned. The heavens are darkened. 
The last three trumpet plagues are called woes. The word woe is an explanation of grief. Revelation 8 and verse 13. And I looked and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. The first woe, or the fifth trumpet plague, is described in chapter 9. The fifth angel sounds a trumpet that begins a military action that lasts five months. The second woe, or the sixth trumpet plague, is pictured with symbols of horses or horsemen. Here we see an intense military counterattack. Revelation 9 and verse 12. One woe is past. Behold, still more woes are coming after these things. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. An army of 200 million drives west across the Euphrates River and destroys one-third of the Earth's population. This phase of World War III will kill billions of people. Yes, Jesus said that unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. Otherwise, all life on Earth would be destroyed. Next, we hear the sound of the seventh trumpet. For Christians, the sounding of the seventh trumpet is good news because it announces the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth and the return of Jesus Christ. We all need to be preparing for that time. Revelation 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. The one-year period of time called the day of the Lord culminates in the announcement that Christ is taking over all the kingdoms and all the governments of this world. That's the good news we all are looking forward to hearing. Now, what else happens when the seventh trumpet sounds? And what happens after the day of the Lord? We'll answer those questions in the conclusion of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you our free one-hour audio tape titled, The Day of the Lord. Over 30 prophecies in the Bible reveal future events in the prophetic time period called the Day of the Lord. You need to understand the prophetic events leading up to the Day of the Lord. This free audio tape will help you identify the prophetic signs, some of which are right now being fulfilled before your very eyes. You need this information. This exciting audio tape will give you prophetic details about your future and the future of the world. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free one-hour audio tape titled, The Day of the Lord. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. The seventh trumpet announces the good news of Christ's takeover of world governments. But the seventh trumpet is also called the third woe. Why? Because it will also signal the seven last plagues. You can read the description of these plagues in the 16th chapter of Revelation. They include plagues of painful sores on those who have worshipped the beast power in his image. They include even more poisonous rivers and seas to the extent that every living creature in the sea died, as it states in Revelation 16.3. The sun becomes hotter, resulting in extreme heat waves that torment those who will not repent of their sins. In northern Israel, on the plain of Jezreel, will be gathered massive military power and might. These armies will actually fight against the commander of heaven's armies, Jesus Christ. Turn to Revelation 19 in your Bible. Revelation 19, verse 11. The Apostle John writes, 
Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. When Christ returns to this earth, he will conquer all his enemies. He will conquer the nations and their powerful armies that fight against him at his coming. The day of the Lord will bring God's judgments on the nations. As we've seen, in one sense, the day of the Lord is the year preceding the return of Christ. In another sense, it continues on through the millennium and on out to eternity. The Apostle Peter describes it this way, 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. The Apostle Peter exhorts us to be in a spiritual state of readiness. We must be alert to the day of the Lord, a sobering period of judgment on the nations. Beyond that lies tomorrow's world, a wonderful time with beauty, prosperity, and restoration under the rulership of Christ. May God speed that day. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World program. Roderick Meredith, John O'Gwen, and I will continue to share with you the exciting revelations of the Bible and where our world is headed. You need to watch world trends in the light of Bible prophecy. Be sure to call or write for the free audio tape we offered on today's program, The Day of the Lord. And be sure to join us again next week right here at this same time. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.